welcome to our session today. We're going to talk about how to integrate external APIs to Salesforce platform by utilizing an integration tool called external services. And later, Sarah will be going to give a live demo on integrating with WhatsApp API. You can see how to send a WhatsApp message from your Salesforce work by calling out to the WhatsApp API. And before anything else, uh, you might have already heard about it for so many times here during Dreamforce, but I have to say the forward-looking statement again. So Salesforce is a publicly traded company, and you should make your purchasing decisions only based on the features that are available. Some introductions to ourselves. I'm Chloe Chen. I'm a software engineer in Salesforce platform integration team. My team have developed this integration tool, external services. And standing next to me is our distinguished guest, Saurav. He is the CEO of Maris Technologies, one of our Salesforce partner companies. Saurav, please introduce yourself and tell us more about your company. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am Saurav Gupta. I, am, I have been a technical architect uh, in Salesforce ecosystem for the past 15 years. And uh, currently, I have been working with Mandras Technologies. Mandras Technologies is a uh, award-winning partner who does implement cross-platform implement, uh, implementations and consultation services. We, uh, we have done more than 150 plus projects and uh, currently have a CSAT score of more than 4.95 on App Exchange. So uh, for the rest of the demo, uh, uh, Chloe will take it forward. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, we're so happy to have you here, Sarab. So, you know, in the past, many of Mara's clients and also our Salesforce customers, they found it very challenging when it comes to integration. And by integration, I meant calling out to external web services from within Salesforce platform. Uh, let's say, for example, you're interested in calling out to an external API like GitHub API, Twilio, uh, or MailChimp, and you kind of want to interact with those web services, like you want to manage your GitHub account from your Salesforce org, or you want to like pull all of your GitHub pull request history, and then based on that information, you want to update um, Salesforce record, right? So if you are a Salesforce admin with little coding knowledge, you may not know where to start. And if you are a pro code user, such as an Apex developers, then you know you can write some Apex code to achieve it. Like, you know, in your code, you can specify the callout endpoint. Uh, you can construct your request and then uh, write some logic to handle the response. But that can still be too much for such a coding expert. Because if you want to make callouts to different APIs, then you have to write boilerplate code. And that is like error prone. And then, you know, the external APIs and the external web services, they are changing all the time. So you have to update your code accordingly. And, you know, that is really hard to maintain. So that's where external services comes into play. It helps you to interact with these external APIs faster, easier, and more effectively for both no-code users and pro-code developers. So let's briefly see how external services works. Um, so first off, a key concept here. An API specification describes what an API can do, how to consume it, what are the expected response and request structures. And the industry standard for a REST-based API specification is called Open API Specification. Cool. So first off, you have your open API specification for the external API you are interested in calling out to. You can obtain such an open API spec from the official documentations of the web service, or you can even create one by yourself by utilizing online tools such as Swagger. Now, after you register this open API spec into external services, we will then do all of the heavy lifting by importing the operations defined in the open API spec, and we automatically generate the underlying codes and methods. 
And these can be leveraged by the Salesforce users um, from the Salesforce components such as you know, Flow Builder, um, Bots, and Omni Studio, and they are also programmed natively into Apex Code. So now, during runtime, you can expect that you can use these Salesforce components to send the call out. You can also consume the response from these Salesforce components. And later in service demo, he will be using Flow Builder to integrate with WhatsApp API and then send the callouts. And now you may wonder how we handle authentication. The answer is we use name credentials. So name credentials uh, is a configuration tool that handles all authentication across Salesforce by specifying a callout endpoint. You can create an external credential to specify the authentication protocol. Nowadays, we support OAuth authentication, JOT tokens, uh, AWS Signature v4, and also custom headers. So later in Seraph's demo, he will be specifying custom headers to do the authentication for the WhatsApp API integration. And also, you can specify permission sets which allows you to control uh, which users are authorized to make the callouts. Well, hopefully these introductions gives you some idea of when it comes to Salesforce integration. And I know nothing is better than actually seeing the real demo. So I hope after watching Syrup's demo, you can understand them better, Syrup. So uh, before I begin with the demo, I would like to tell you a brief introduction about what about the integration that we are going to do today? Was, uh, with almost yeah, let me with almost every uh, every industry and almost every person using WhatsApp today for to share, communicate and share. WhatsApp becomes one of the most important tool for any any business to be in today. Retail in the, retail customers, non-profit industry, higher education, and many other industries are using WhatsApp to not only just communicate with its customer, but as a cell service, as a cell service portal, as a digital storefront for they use WhatsApp for their business marketing. And recently, a lot many have started using for multi-factor authentication and one, uh, sending one-time passwords to their customer. So I, I really think, don't you think some, we, something as exciting as this can be integrated with Salesforce in just a few clicks and in a matter of minutes? I am. So I'll just start with the demo. Great. OK. So, so for the purposes of this demo, we, have, we will start with uh, creating an Open API 3 specification. Open API 3 specification is the uh, specification that is laid down and is being used uh, many other REST APIs providers today. Uh, this specification defines the structure of how an API should be documented. So we are for this demo, we are using Swagger, which is an open source uh, tool to define and create a document a REST APIs. So uh, so we have created a, we have created one small plugin for uh, Open API specification, and it helps you. Uh, we you can uh, you can define all the request body and response in Swagger. Of course, that we we just have to do, uh, do an export. We just need to go to the download and download the JSON resolved file from the Swagger. So once we have done that, we we can move over to Salesforce. Uh, at Salesforce, we what we need to do is we need to create name credentials. So name credentials, as uh, Chloe has mentioned, is one of the most secure place to do to set up your external credentials. So uh, how we set this name credentials up, uh, we can discuss this later. Uh, but for now, we have created a name credential and uh, uh, that integrates with uh, WhatsApp and provides the required authentication. Post that, I will. We will go ahead and set up the external services. So I'll click on external services and I'll click on add. So once, so for this demo, we with using external services, you can also use MuleSoft APIs to integrate, or you can provide the JSON resolved file that we have downloaded from Swagger. For the purposes of demo, we will use the API specification that we downloaded. We can just give any name. We have to choose complete JSON and 
and the external uh, name credential that we just created just i just refer to in the previous step so i'll paste the json that i downloaded from uh, swagger now once i have pasted the json so i will click on next what external service is doing in the backend it recognizes all the actions that the external services was defined to do and identifies all the requests and responses from it and shows us all the operations there could be hundreds or thousands of these operations in an external api definition so for the purpose uh, of this demo we only have one but if even if there are hundreds of definition we do not need to move forward with all the definitions we can choose what all operations we want to use in our current uh, integration so when i click on uh, i selected one of the operations i clicked on next so as soon as i click on next for all the definitions that we have chosen uh, salesforce will show us what all what all request and response is expected of the uh, api and we can just click on finish so click on finish will create an external service uh, in salesforce with the matter of in the matter of minutes it will also create all the apex classes sorry uh it will also create all the apex classes uh, dynamically so just just see how quickly an external service has created all the apex classes which in in a in a normal scenario it would have taken us days or in fact weeks to identify and create so uh, so this is the power of external service now for the current demo we will be we will be sending a whatsapp message to one of our contacts so for that we will create a flow uh, a flow that will call external services and send the message through so i have a demo flow ready so yeah so uh, so in this flow uh, what we are doing is uh, based on the quick action that will call the external services uh, the the flow it will pass the record id and we will fetch the phone number of the contact then what we are doing is we are just mapping all the parameters all the all the parameters that were created as part of external services using uh, uh, classes we will pass all the required parameters in the template done and next the only thing that we need to done is call the action that was created again as part of external service so even even an admin who has no knowledge of code who has no knowledge of uh, uh, writing apex can set up an integration with whatsapp or any other api provider for that matter click on done i will i'll just move to the contact so for this con uh, so i already have a contact set up i have some uh, i have provided the mobile number for the contact and i'll just click on send whatsapp so as soon as i click on send whatsapp so it calls the flow in the backend as the flow has been executed so if you will see in my in my whatsapp i have received a message immediately from the flow I think that's with the demo, uh, Chloe. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Uh, 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 please. Yeah, that was yes. yeah, that was an amazing demo. It's like always fascinating to see how, like, with just a few clicks, you can just talk to your WhatsApp friend from your Salesforce work, right? So that is that is wonderful. Thank you so much. So, I would like to. Um, yeah. I would like to. Um, show you some considerations uh, in Syrup's demo. So if you notice, he registered one um, open API spec WhatsApp API, and then that counted as one external service registration. And we allow you up, uh, register up to 150 of them. So you can register one API for WhatsApp, one for Twilio, one for GitHub. And you know you can also register multiple different versions of the WhatsApp API. And then, uh, if you still remember, he selects one operation that is called post message from iPhone. And actually, there can be a lot more operations defined in one open API spec. And we allow you to select up to 1,250 active operations. So you can select all of the operations you are interested in calling out to. And same for the active objects. So he quickly shows the, the Apex classes page. And then you might probably see that there are multiple different Apex classes generated for this WhatsApp API. Those objects are created for um, requests 
and response parameters when you make the callouts. So there are kind of like the different data types that are needed for making the flow callouts or Apex callouts. And some additional features to know, we support OpenAPI 2.0 and 3.0. And what he shows is the OpenAPI 3.0 standard. And you can also distribute your external services in a package. And also, Syrup shows the like, kind of like the no-code solution by using Flow Builder. But you can also leverage in those generated Apex classes for Apex developers. They will help you to write your Apex code easier when you want to make external callouts. And in the end, I want to highlight some of our external services roadmaps. So in the last release, Summer 24, we enabled calling out to MuleSoft invocable actions from a flow orchestration. And we also extend the editing capabilities for HTTP action callout to um, support all of the HTTP methods. And in the next release, Winter 24, we will roll out a new feature called asynchronous external service callouts with callbacks. And that will be enabled for Apex users first. So now you can expect that you can um, call, make an asynchronous invocation, like for example, to um, auto, auto, robotic automation process that is natively asynchronous. So after you make the callouts, you can expect that after days or even months, your, the asynchronous response can be handled gracefully by us. And also we're going to support registering YAML format of OpenAPI spec in addition to JSON format. And lastly, there is a new feature called HTTP Callout Test Connect. It will allow you test to test your HTTP callout even before registering external service registration. And coming up, we will uh, enable asynchronous callouts with callbacks for flow users as well. So stay tuned for these, all of these exciting new features. And I'll pass back to Sarab. So uh, if you guys have more questions, me and Chloe will be available on the side uh, after the session. And you can also reach out to uh, manners.com to uh, if you have further questions and probably need any of, any of the help with external services. Uh, you can use the QR code to download all the resources that we have used in this uh, project. Uh, uh, they have been uploaded on the Trailblazer community. Uh, yeah, again, yeah, thank you so much thank to be here with us, Sarab. And we hope you enjoy our presentation and Sarab's demo. And we hope you learned something today uh, regarding Salesforce integration. Thank you.